How's it going, guys? And welcome to the Kind Minds Podcast. I'm joined today by old friend Pink Chu Chan. Hello. And I'm joined by future slave of Kai Minds, J- LJ, known as Jake. Hi. Or the other way around. Hello. I'm a slave to too many people as it is. And my cat is on my balls. I'm really hurting him right now. Get off. I ordered it to do that. Anyway, guys, so how are you all doing today? I am doing just dandy. Yeah, I'm doing good. So, guys, what have you been playing or watching this week? Well, watching and playing, in terms of what I've been watching, I've been watching um, in Inuyasha, and in terms of what I've been playing, I've been playing Catherine. I couldn't get past the... I think it was the second chapter. I kept getting stuck, so I just watched the entire movie on YouTube. Well, I, I'm only a few minutes in. I'm only a few minutes in, and I just played the tutorial, and it looks pretty good. And it looks like a very interesting game from what I'm seeing. Oh, yeah, it's an interesting game, but it's just difficult. It's a puzzle. I suck at puzzles. It's a very good concept. I like the story of it. Um, so what about you, Pink? Um, as far as watching goes, I haven't really been watching very many shows, but in terms of games... Not really new games. I have been um, playing Sudoku in a book. And I have been watching, if I can pull it up because I cannot pronounce it to save my life, (gasps) Guilty Crown. Oh, I've heard of that. I've heard of it. It's all right. It's like... It's very dirty at the beginning because the girl is basically saying, you can use me any way you want to defeat him. It's like, oh... And the way she's laying down, it's like, oh. I have heard some of the soundtrack with it, and the soundtrack sounds really nice. Oh, yeah, it's it's, be- it's beautiful. The visuals are really, well, not stunning. It's not, um, oh, God, it's, it, it's not, like, pff, spirited away stunning, but it's still pretty impressive. Um, uh, but as for playing, I've been getting back to Grand Theft Auto V because I can. And because I haven't completed it yet. Have you been being a psychotic bastard in that game? Oh my! Oh, I love Trevor. He's so awesome. I every time I I cut to him, he's doing something funny. I mean, the other day, um, last week when I cut to Trevor, he was dr- driving around catching someone and go, "Oh come on! I promise I won't show it again. Come back here." <laughs> and yesterday, he came out of a woman's clothes shop and he was just saying, "Oh come on! I'm not the weirdest one here." It's just stuff like that just make me laugh out loud. (laughs) Right, so if you guys are in America, and people who are not in America, you still know what I'm talking about. Black Friday is today, or two days or a few days after you're watching this. Anyway, Black Friday has just happened. And has anyone got any freaky stories about Black Friday? Because we all know people will die for, for Black Friday deals. I've never gone out on Black Friday. Today was an exception because I go to a small game shop that's not normally busy any day. So, and that's where I got, um, Catherine and another PS, and another game for, um, my PS2. But no, I don't really have any crazy stories. I mostly just stay away from the crowds on Black Friday because I like my life where it is. Thank you very much. I prefer the internet. It's so much better. What about you? Yeah. And I never usually go out shopping myself unless necessary and... Part of it is because I don't know how to drive, so if I really want to go somewhere, I do need to be driven around or mm. take a bus or something. Or if it's close by, just walk. Black Friday in the UK isn't really a big thing. We still have Black Friday, but it's not like advertisers big. It's just like online stores that say, oh yeah, it's Black Friday deals because we've, we're have we a US company, so we might as well extend it to UK and stuff like that. But I tried ordering um, Battlefield 4 on EA Origin and I got that for £27 or 26 99 and then I got a refund straight away because Amazon was selling it for four quid cheaper so I got a refund from that and then went to Amazon but I've been trying to buy some other games from a, a, a store called Game it's basically the equivalent to GameStop in the US but I, I got locked out of my account because I couldn't remember my password but I'm pretty sure it was the same password I've been using for three years. It just so happens that it was broken. And I couldn't get an email response. So I, I went ballistic and I sent this email. This is a legitimate email I sent to them. I said, game, this is getting absolutely ridiculous. I've been waiting for days to, 
for someone to answer my email. I have tried using the online chat room. Every time I try and use the online chat for help, I have to wait 20 to 30 minutes to attempt to connect, but always encounter a problem. I am now told to try again later, yet still no avail. Does your guinea pig ha keep getting tired and have to stop generating the power needed for your computers? I know times are hard and the winter is coming, but you don't need a hedgehog to run at the speed of sound to, to generate your power. Because of your terrible online service, I have now lost out on some great offers that I only want to buy from you because of my rewards card. And I don't particularly want to break my hand punching bricks for coins. Pe people don't realise how much that hurts. I have been locked out my account after forgetting my password. But I have a feeling there was something wrong with the site this day. As, I'm, as I was certain, I used the right one. And to add to my suspicion when I tried to reset the password, it took four hours to receive an email. As soon as I changed it and tried to log in, it was told... It told me I was logged out. And to further increase my suspicion, it took another four hours to confirm an email saying my message for assistance was received. I completed Dreamcast games quicker than this. <laughs> Why must a simple request take so long? It's going to be ages before I get any sort of deals like the ones I've missed from your company again. I guess I could go to Amazon and save one to three pounds, but I choose you because of what I thought was great service and your rewards to customers. I guess I could go to your store and spend... Oh, wait, why would I do that? Online is cheaper. I don't take... <laughs> it doesn't take a mentally unstable monkey throwing barrels to realise something needs to be done about this. Please reactivate my account so I can spend the rest of my reward points and buy the rest of my games and Christmas presents elsewhere. Just to make you realise how desperate I am, in my blind and despair, I have ordered from the devil themselves. EA Origin. <laughs> this is how serious it is! <laughs> this is how serious it is, guys! EA... Fucking Origins! <laughs> Please reactivate my account. You're sincerely, Jamie. <laughs> I swear to God, I deliver. I have sent that email. My God, that was the best email I have ever heard in my life, and the video game references were glorious. But that's my silly Black Friday story. I'm sure all of you have got one, and if you do, send us an email because we won't read them. Now, LJ. <laughs> What do you have to tell us today? Like, just a topic in general? My first topic was mostly talking about um, the upcoming video game Kingdom Hearts 3. Boo. Fuck you. But yeah, Kingdom Hearts 3 is coming around in a couple years, I guess, and there have been a bit of trailers and some speculation, and I thought I'd give my two cents on the whole thing, what I want to see and what I'm hoping for and all that. I've been a... Um, avid, an avid fan of the Kingdom Hearts series since the first game. The first game is actually my all-time favorite video game. I, I, I can play it so many times and not get tired of it, but, um, I've been following the series. It's had its ups and downs, and I'm hoping that what Kingdom Hearts 3 does is learn from all the previous games, learns what works and what doesn't, and um, just comes in with just a great experience. I mean, I'm not expecting anything to top the first one. It's not what I'm necessarily asking for. What I'm asking for is a game that pretty much delivers on something I've been waiting for since, and me and my, me and any other Kingdom Hearts fan out there, what we've been waiting for since completing, um, Kingdom Hearts 2. Ditto. Pink, your turn. Oh, it's my time, uh, my turn to say my topic? Yeah, but before you do, I shall be back in a minute. Sorry about this. That's fine. Okay, we'll wait. Note to Omni, do not put this in. I swear to God. Swear to me! Um, for those of you who have seen the first podcast, you know I talked about the movie Frozen and how excited I was to see that movie. Well, I actually did get a chance to watch it yesterday. I saw it opening day! And, um, I, I went into the theater expecting it to be good, and... Like, there was so much irony that happened as I was getting to and from the theater. As soon as we left the theater after watching it, it actually started snowing. <gasps> Magical! <laughs> well, and there then... was already snow on the ground, but 
there wasn't very much, but then it started snowing after we got out of the theater. Like, and then Pink started singing for the first time in forever from the movie. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, not not necessarily at that moment, but when I got home, yeah. And my opinions about the movie, it is absolutely fantastic. I've seen most reviews. It looks quite good, I must admit. It, it is will... really good. It's actually my new favorite Disney movie, if I can be so honest. Well, people yeah, are actually comparing s- the songs to on the same standard as The Lion King. And I'm like, I love The Lion King. In regards to the songs, a lot of the time I felt that um the that that the songs from the movie felt like half the time I felt I was watching a Broadway musical. They were that yeah. good. Yeah. Were they? Yes. Mm-hmm. They're- there, the, you could tell that a lot of attention were put into were was put into the songs. And then you have the characters, like the characters were really well written. I enjoyed every single one of them. Olaf is the funniest motherfucker to ever. Oh exist. yes, Olaf. Is that the snowman? Yes. Yes, that's the snowman. Right. He is friggin' hilarious. Like the trailer doesn't even show half of his fu- half of the fu- of his funny lines, and I think that's for the good because a lot of his lines I found myself laughing so hard, and I think it also is I it you also got to give credit to the to the voice actor's performance because he did great. He he really got into the role, and he was a lot of fun. Oh yeah, definitely. And the story was just it's something unlike anything you've ever seen in a Disney movie before. I don't think I'm spoiling anything here, but there is the death of at least one parent. <gasps> because it's Disney. It's fucking Disney. It's going to happen. But what's funny is, like, when this moment happened, everyone in the theater was like, oh my god. And I was just, being a longtime Disney fan, I was like, <laughs> oh, Disney, you never change. Well, I mean, I didn't react too much in regards to it. It was just the aftermath and just the song that was playing continuing and... Oh, yeah, the song playing was very emotional, but just the moment was just a whole, oh, Disney, some things never change. Yeah, throughout the entire movie, when I was not laughing, if there were moments that were really emotional, I was actually crying. I I felt like crying a lot of times in this movie, but it's like... (laughs) Ha! Gay! One thing to note, I'm not gonna spoil it, but there are so many twists in the story. You think you've got the entire plot figured out, and then a twist just comes right out of nowhere. Like, Like, I'm... Like I'm, I'm, I'm one of those people that at, at certain moments in movies I'll be like, "All right, I got you figured out," and then when I don't, I feel fucking stupid. But yeah, I enjoyed it myself, and but I did find it weird that my friend, that I saw this with a friend, and we were the only two people in the entire theater who didn't bring a kid along with us. Oh, oh d- well, it was kind of the same. Th- well, actually, no, I did see a few teenagers when I went to go see it. There were only very few families. But yeah, it's still a fantastic movie, and I do highly recommend it. So, what would you guys give it out of 10 bananas? 10. 10 out of 10. 10. Definitely a 10. Yes. Mm-hmm. So, guys, you all know Atlas Spit the Dust, don't you? Mm-hmm. Sorry, what? You all know the game company Atlas nearly bit the dust, right? Until Did? Sega bought them. Huh. Well, s- really? Well, they didn't. They just got out for the uh, publishing business because they couldn't afford it. Hmm. Okay. Well, basically, Sega brought them back. Uh, brought them. I I think Sega buying Atlas was one of the best decisions Sega ever made because it it just fits perfectly. Oh yeah. I think Atlas has the perfect amount of IP and drive, and Sega has the right amount of resources. Even though oh, definitely. the games are mediocre at times, with only a few good ones, but Sega are actually given Atlas permission to use some of their IPs, such as oh god, what's it called? <laughs> Space Channel, for example. That's oh, one. Nice. Mm. But would you want another Space Channel? I'm I, not sure. Well, I, haven't I haven't played really the games. played the game, so get a space channel but they have given them permission to use some of their ips to make their own games and sequels so could we be seeing shemu free from sega by made by atlas i probably wouldn't care because i tried playing the first shenmu and i couldn't get through the game bored me to tears well it was like the heavy rain of the dreamcast era 
Well, at least Heavy Rain was exciting. This was just kind of, oh, where do I go? This is... I can't figure out where to go. The story's not interesting. The characters are boring. The voice acting is ass. But did you know Shenmue 1 was the most expensive game at the time? I think that's about 150, probably 130 million. Yeah, I do. Yeah, it it did look pretty revolutionary for its time with the graphics on not only the characters, but the fact that they based the entire setting on a place in Japan. Mm. I've never played the Shenmue games, but I'm... I've, well, saying that, I've played on a friend's copy, but I'm waiting out for a HD release. If you, I will say, um, if you could, if you have the patience, if you have the patience, it can probably be a good game. I just, I, I just don't have that much of a patience level, but that's usually surprising for me because I hear a lot of people say, like, one of my favorite games, King, no, uh, Sonic Adventure 2 requires a lot of patience, and I have the patience level to play through it. Just... I'm going to be a fanboy here. Sonic Adventure 2 is one of the best Sonic game, I think. Hell yeah! Hell yes. It does require a lot of patience. I think the um, Sonic and Shadow stages are excellent. I think the Knuckles and Rouge stages are good. Although, I hate the fact that with Sonic I hate, Adventure, I hate, you have hate, all three. Yeah, and I also hate their bo- both of their last stages. Uh, Meteor, Her- Meteor yeah. Herd and uh, Mad Space. Worst ever they're just so big, unnecessarily big, to make it a finale. And Tales and Eggman say just, we're terrible. Absolute. Uh, I, they're so yeah, slow, I, so clunky, so ugh, stiff and to control. Turn, turning was such a bitch in that, in those things. Mm. Mm. They could walk straight, okay, but whenever I had to turn, it felt, uh, turn. Right. Listen up, ladies and gentlemen. Here's a spoiler alert for Family Guy. You will hear that a character has been killed off, so if you don't want to hear, you can skip to this timeline, which is shown on screen. Ready? Go. Right, so Brian Griffin, the dog, is dead. What the fuck? I know, it, right? It's not necess- My problem isn't necessarily that they um, killed him off. My problem is how they did it. I mean, it's, this is a character who has been around since episode one, mm. and, and you kill him off so... It, his death was so friggin' tasteless. I just... Uh, I agree. It, I I saw it, and I, I... I was cringing the entire time. That's why I'm almost certain they're gonna bring him back, because it, it was like, oh yeah, guess what? Watch out for tonight, because a character's gonna die tonight. It's like, wait, what? First time we're hearing about this. At least with uh, The Simpsons, they tease that, oh yeah, next season, a major character's gonna die. Right, but with Family Guy, it was like, "Oh yeah, watch tonight because he's gonna die." And if if he died, like of old age, they would have taken their time and said, said sort of like a flashback montage, and it would have been very tasteful, mm. like you said. But the fact it was done so quick, and it was like <clears throat> run over, and then two one minute later, everyone's crying and say, "Oh yeah, your dog's gone." It's like, wait, this is too quick. I cannot feel sorry for this. I cannot feel sorry for the family because it's a cartoon show. If they stretch it out for an hour episode or made out that he died in two minutes, in the mm-hmm. first two minutes, and then they dragged it out until they got the new dog. Again, I'm pissed off about this. They bring in a new dog almost instantly. Give it at least one episode. Make the yeah. whole episode so upsetting. That's why I'm almost certain they're going to bring it back because... If yeah. you don't, if you don't know, then Stewie brought, basically destroyed his time machine, so he can't. So that's his excuse for not bringing him back. But what's to say he can't find these supplies again somewhere else and bring him back? I just think it's going to be like season finale because who's going to sing with Stewie? No yeah, one. It's like, <laughs> it's like uh, but if they do bring him back, I'm actually going to be a be pissed off still because it was still a tasteless way to Mm. go about this to go about this plot agreed Mm -hmm. and i mean i'm i can i mean i am aware that seth mcfarlane as as far as i'm concerned is hasn't really been near the writing process for the show for some time i can only imagine what he how pissed he is because from what i've seen it was his idea it was his idea what It it was his idea he suggested what well, it wasn't. That's... I, I'm not sure if it was initially his idea, but he def he was definitely there when they conceived the idea, and That's... he was like, 
you know what, that's quite good. And then he that's... talked it through to the writers, he talked it through to okay, the cast. Maybe it would have been, again, like, yeah, if it was a very emotional episode in regard to Brian's death, then yeah, this would be a good episode. Mm. But, the but fact again, that's... it's just for, yeah, the fact that it's so tasteless, it's just like, run over, dead. Yeah, and the fact that, um, I can't believe Seth MacFarlane allowed this, because I've seen in interviews that, um, he said countless times that, um, Brian is his favorite character, yeah. he, because he put a lot of, he based a lot of, um, Brian's personality traits on himself. Mm. So, it's like, I can't believe that he was on board with this idea. Maybe he was thinking of it a different way, and it was written differently than what he was planning out, I don't know, but... Mm. I mean... People have said this is a permanent thing because next episode he's definitely not there. But like I said, it, this is Family Guy. Stewie has a fucking time machine. He can build. Well, he doesn't have one, but he can rebuild one. He can easily he bring has, him back. He has a mach- he had a machine that allowed him to go through a simulation of what would happen if he killed Lois. Yeah. So yeah. what makes you think the like five episodes or until the finale? It's like they, they do that again and they go. So, Sue, what did you do this time? Well, Brian, I did the simulation again, and I did try to see what it would be like if you died. Oh, really? How did it go? Well, I was really upset, Brian. I don't think I would ever like that from you. Oh, I love you too. You're such a homo. <laughs> <laughs> and then it will end, and then the credits will come out. I think that would be a perfect thing, because they made the joke when, when it came out of the thing, yeah. After mm-hmm. Lois's death, it would be like, don't you think that'd be a big middle finger to the fans? Well, I think they would just enjoy the fact that they were along for the ride. I don't know, man. I think you'd piss a lot of people off. Well, we mm-hmm. just have to find out. Well, or... it's not like The Sopranos where they just cut it off in mid set. <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> that's it. Oh god. But yeah, Brian's death. I don't approve of how they went about it. No. If agreed. I wouldn't. I would be all in favor to killing off the dog if it was done tastefully, because killing off the main character is designed to attract fans, and they've done that beautifully. They've c- created controversy, but he's going to be back. It's obvious. He's Pretty definitely going to be back. Pretty much, I'm predicting that he's going to come back because they would honestly, they'd be kind of stupid for not for keeping um, Brian's replacement on board as a permanent character. Hmm. Yeah, I'm hoping that they bring him back. Yeah. And again, going back to the timeless of it, it was like, after interviews, after the episode, they didn't say... Obviously, it's going to be a big uh, twist, a big secret, so they don't want to reveal it. But it was like, oh yeah, we brought him on because we think it'll be perfect for the role. But, hmm, it seems very suspicious that it was released very quickly. Yeah. After the show, instead of a week, it was the day later. It's like, if you're meant to be really busy, then why? Yeah, very suspicious. So, pretty anyway. much. Well, that's it, guys, for another episode of the Kind Minds podcast. Thank you to Jake and Pink to joining us. Is there anything you want to say before we go? Uh, I was glad to be here, and I can't wait to start making reviews for this site. Yes, watch out for Jake. And we will provide a link in the description when he's first on the site. And what will you be doing with us, Jake? I'm going to be... My show is going to be Adaptation Eradication, where I take on um, movies that are adaptation sequels, spinoffs, etc. And I'm starting off with a review with Pink of the movie Pokemon 2000, so look forward to that. Thank you guys for joining me. I've been Jamie the Comic, that's been Jake, and that's also been Pink Pinkachu Chan. I forgot to say, Pink Shu Chan. Yes. I'm sorry, Pikachu. Pikachu chat. Pikachu. <laughs> oh, that's so cute. Do it, <laughs> do it again. Do it again. Pikachu. <laughs> 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 <laughs>